Hello. Hello. My name is Patricia McNeely. I'm an Illumin Twin Flame from Chicago, Illinois. And today I'm going to talk to you about some deeper things along with your journey, uh, what to expect, some of the things that have been affecting a lot of you, although not everybody, and yet it's something that needs to be spoken about because we're actually in this time right now where we're sort of in the final stretch for a lot of you where you're going to either encounter, re-encounter, reunite, and merge with your twin. And this is to address some of the shadowy aspects of some of what you might be feeling and maybe some physical sensations, aches and pains that you really can't account for. So what I'm going to uh, talk about first are uh, Twin Flames, the agreement. Now, when at our first inception, we, we had everything within and yet we weren't actually uh, fully formed, so to speak. We hadn't, you know, uh, spread our wings, stretched our legs, tried out environments. And this is something that a lot of us wish to do. We wish to experience creations while in a form. Uh, because think about it, if you're flying around in your spirit form, how are you going to experience snow or a snowball fight or skiing or something like that? So a lot of us did wish to. And in order to do that, uh, we had an agreement because we were leaving our home. We were leaving Source, where we originate from. And this is the agreement. The agreement was to go, to be... In other words, to be the angelic selves that we are, to explore. We had full reign to explore anything and everything. Touch it, taste it, poke it, uh, lick it, anything. We had an agreement to be moderate. Whoops, a lot of us weren't all that moderate down the line. We had an agreement to love. And the agreement to love was to love anything. Love animals, love foods, love each other. This is where the agreement to love soulmates was uh, part of a, a special agreement. And yet this was uh, separate from your agreement to love your twin. Have many of you had lives with your twin? Oh yes, many of you have had wonderful happy lives. And you've had wonderful happy lives with soulmates because you managed to find the light and the love within those soulmates. We also had an agreement to become again our angelic selves and to be the love. And for many of us, the agreement is to go home or to go home to some of our home spots. Uh, favorite places that we've learned to love or really felt and resonated with. It could be a geographical location. It could be some other planetary system that you really feel that you originate from and that that is your spiritual home. So some of what I'm going to say uh, to some people is going to absolutely resonate. If you haven't delved in really deeply and had a lot of experiences and had some karmic experiences to balance and uh, get rid of, some of this is going to sound like, science fiction or fantasy or something like that. But science fiction and fantasy actually originates from our truths, our true experiences. And yes, it can take on a proportion just like anybody's fishing story. People that go fishing and then the fish gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, for some of us, what we remember is actually a smaller version of the magnitude of a really horrific experience or a really wonderful experience or um, something from another planet that you just can't find it here and you can't put your finger on why this place just doesn't feel right. Um, there's a reason we're here. So I'm going to get into uh, some of that. I do plan to talk about our origins in a completely other video. So I'm only going to touch on some things here. So. What am I calling this? I'm talking about twin flames, blood enemies, lovers, and false twin energetics and where these came from. 
because as we've done a lot of cleaning and clearing on ourselves, and a lot of you who watch me or become aware that these videos are available, you are the aware one. And so you've been aware that you've been cleaning, clearing, transmuting, moving, changing up your house. A lot of us have done a lot of it. Me personally, I have changed my mattress, changed furniture, painted the walls, decluttered, donated. I mean, you meet, you name it, I've thrown out, got in, re in order to make the space for my twin, but in order to clear all my spaces, all my energetic spaces, um, do I want to have a mattress that I used with a former person? No. No, it's time for everything to be as ready as you possibly can be and, and sort of within your financial means. So what I'm going to also cover is our perception because right after we separated, this is where our perception started getting skewed. And what happened as we separated? Well, if you have source, here we are at source in our oneness. Yeah, I'm just going to sort of depict this here. And one twin went one way, and one twin went the other way. And uh, many ways we did this actually to accelerate the exploration and the experiences. We split our essence. And within the angelic realms, there are angelics and other types of beings that are one beings who never, they're not a split essence. They're not a split soul, and yet we are, which makes us unique here on planet Earth because we, we have sometimes felt like misfits or we didn't quite fit in or something was missing, we're missing our other half, and that's all valid and true because you can only be as whole a person as a half a soul can be, and that's the truth for, for us. Um, are many of us well-rounded? Oh, absolutely. Do we have our twin within? Yes, but we're getting to the full merge. And there are people who have fully merged, but they're a little bit few and far between, and not a lot of them are talking about it just because the experience itself, there's no words for it. They're not going back to really talk about it that much. Some people do, but then they need to be together. Twins are supposed to be together, and I'm going to expect that of a lot of you. Don't be tripping out on the internet too much. Be with your twin. Take time. You know, uh, there's a time to be in, use the internet as a tool, and a time to go enjoy. Um, I know that you will. I know a lot of you do. So, you know, that, that being said, we're going to move along here. So, you've got where uh, maybe your counterpart wove themselves into all these places. Here's a place, and here's a place, and here's a place, and here's a place. And you're here, and whoops, you started encountering some conflict, or confrontations, or negative energy, or, or because we're separated now. And we forgot. We forgot who we are. We forgot who the other people are. There's someone in a form, and what are you going to say to them? Some of them will, you know, have confronted us or done things to us or poked us or something like this. Or worse, trauma, abuse, you name it. It's been perpetrated on us, and we've perpetrated it as well. Um, that is the karma. So this is your universal spot. And this is the time now where you're resolving all karma. These are original agreements, original high-level spiritual agreements with your immediate family, with uh, the soulmate, with a boyfriend, girlfriend, spouse that uh, you or your twin is involved with or married to. So the awareness is there that Something's finished. Something has maybe even expired and passed the point of expiration. And you need to do something. And a lot of people are sort of at this uh, crossroad or, you know, you're sort of at an impasse because you're each waiting for the other one to make a move. Well, maybe if, uh, maybe if that person makes a move and leaves or maybe if, you know, my twin makes a move. This is the time when the universe actually is supporting you and saying, we're going to make it so easy for you. We're going to put the right people into place for you. We're going to put the right living situation, even if it's temporary. We're going to uh, support you in every way that we can. Take that baby step 
to move into your new life. Step out of the old. Now, I want to talk to you about when we left and we were angelics and we explored. Some of what we explored was painful. And what did we do? We split ourselves. We became, we, we split. So we became more and more fragmented. Now, as we fragmented, um, we also created these energetics. And I'm going to give you an example. Um, one that I call the sworn blood enemy because this has actually occurred. What if you were in a life with your twin and your twin was killed by this other soulmate? You forgot that maybe this was part of the agreement to explore. So what did you do? You vowed till eternity, revenge or retaliation, and you would get that person. Well, guess what? Maybe that person's been in your life. Maybe they're your best friend. Or maybe it's your twin's best friend. Or maybe that person is a spouse. And what do you do with that? What has been created? We have actually created a false twin energetic with these negative emotions. Why? Because we are the creators. But this was not created from the light and love of our union. This was created by us when we became disconnected and fragmented. Okay, so is there any pointing fingers? I'm sure there's someone who originally did it, but once it was out there in the collective, that's when the trouble started and it damaged the, the psyche. Um, this is a large part of the reason for the runner dynamic is because you'll have people that um, feel these intense emotions and separation is needed for that to all heal and fall out. Now I know a lot of you, including me, have done amazing work cleaning, clearing, and healing yourself, your spaces, your, your life, you're ready, and, and yet some of you are starting to verge into that pain. Why? It's because of these energetics. And how are you going to get rid of that? Because here's the thing, maybe you got a divorce or you broke up or you left this job or you left this religion. Anything that was giving you pain and not supporting your full union and you're ready. And then the same was true for your twin, but what happens? They stay and linger in a situation or they re-engage in old behavior because now they're feeling pretty good. They're feeling uh, their power again or they're feeling the love. And so some of them, though, don't know what to do. They don't always have that light bulb go off to be with their twin. And if they re-engage in old behaviors, patterns, um, addictions, and particularly sexual behavior, if they are having sex in 3D with other soulmates after your agreement has concluded, you're going to feel it. And the way that the pains show up are... They can be cramping, they can be pains in your sacred sexual area, your heart, your spleen, uh, headaches, and um, you may be wondering, well, you know, why? I've already done my clearing. Your twin re-engaged. And a lot of you are aware of this. A lot of you are aware that the twin is still doing things. Why are they still doing it? Why are they, you know, why? What's going to happen? How can I fix this? And Talking about um, some of this stuff, blood enemies, there's people that you interacted with to experience the nth degree at the very edge of almost non-love. And you could see it. You could see it in the eyes. You've seen eyes that look like they're looking at you over a dueling pistol or a sword or something. You're like, you have a soul recognition of some of this stuff. But you can't always put your finger on everything about it. And you don't have to. You don't need all the details. All you need to know is that you're in the energy time now where this is going to go and you're going to have huge assistance to get rid of this. But there needs to be an acknowledgement. And that's where your perception comes in. Why is my twin doing this? Why is my twin staying in this marriage? You have to dig deep inside and really get to the core thing. And you will find that the twin doesn't feel safe or they feel trapped or they feel bound by some 
past religious edict that they had in some other life. And I'm going to read something to you that I wrote. All of this, by the way, is, I will acknowledge you, it is tedious, it is exhausting, it's repetitive, it's getting to us, it's grinding on us, it's grating on your last frayed nerve. You had one nerve left and it's frayed now and, and this person has a false energetic that's, that's leaning on it. Okay, the aware twin keeps clearing their spaces in their bodies to hold the union. So you are holding your union. I had to write this out. Um, the other twin may still be engaging with soulmates with old patterns, addictions, behaviors, sexual activity. What does this do? It reinserts the lower energies back into your cleared spaces and it, it muddles up your union. So this is, I actually wrote this back in 2011. This is when I first started uh, feeling where everything was moving and expanding. Um, don't focus on the internal. We are focusing on the internal twin energy and connections. If you use the external, you might be pulling in the energies which may reattach what you have previously released. And that, in essence, is what a lot of people's twins are doing. Um, the aware twin then goes through more exhausting cycles of clearing until the counterpart gets it, gets it enough to take the right actions and appropriate actions and behaviors. When they stop engaging in 3D activity and finally tap into their own 5D union with you to willingly merge. Now you're coming up to that time. I'm going to talk about false twins because the false twin energetic does attach to people. It will attach to a soulmate. It is looking for a home to stay and it's, it's not from the light. It is uh, negative, it's painful. The false twins will intentionally grip harder onto your counterpart. They feed off of your union and they will mold yourself around their twin. How do they mold their self? It's actually in the chakras, which is why you might feel it in your spleen, in your uterus, in your testicles, in your uh, ovaries, in your, um, uh, the, um, heart area, you might feel a, a chest pain or a breast pain or something on your head. It might feel like something's, uh, a friend of mine described it as having a, a wet dish rag on her head at all times, sort of obscuring her eye. And there's a lot of other insidious things that happen with it. This is an insidious energy. And it's not enough to say, you know, go out and be healed. You, you have to actively ask and request to get rid of it. Okay, they mold themselves around your twin. They, but what happens is it operates like a siphon. So the spleen and the pancreas, it will siphon off your union and you'll find people that thought uh, they were healing from certain metabolic conditions such as hypoglycemia or diabetes or something like that feeling like they're going backwards. Why? Because the siphon's there. It is literally sucking the life out of your union. And the more that that twin engages with it, the less they're able to feel. Now, if you're on the other end trying to get information, say um, you have a lot of distractions, all your twin is feeling like is static. It's like snow on a television where you can't tune in the channel. I don't know that many people have those kind of TVs anymore, but it's like that. You, they can't pick it up. If you're on social media too much, that's what your twin picks up. It picks up static. Okay. Um, so this false twin energy acts like a siphon, and, and yet, here's the thing. Your twin... If they're engaging with a false twin, false twin energetic, they can't ground it. That person they're with may continue to insist upon sex or certain sexual positions or um, be seductive. And yet 
it can't be grounded. It's not grounded anymore because what happens is there's you're still lifting off with your twin. You're still lifting off and that thing's pulling. It's trying to still hang on and you can perceive it. You feel tilted. You'll feel a um, sense of vertigo here or the back of the head. Back of the head, top of the head, um, masculine or feminine sides. You'll feel um, energies and that is uh, something that it's because of all it's because due to the previous fragmenting now how does a person get this false twin energetic on them because a lot of people that this happens to are themselves twin flames it's because they've disconnected their own soul they have like a very small connection and they haven't worked on themselves they haven't uh, been reconnected and they're still in a state of fragmentation and disconnection meanwhile you've been getting your twin already you've been reintegrating everything you've been pulling all kinds of light and love into your union and your twin is ready 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 and that person is just a drag on your union that's what it is so the the more that the true twins are able to magnetize and come closer to reunion and full awareness, the more that the false twin will be seen for what it is and it can't keep holding the facade, okay? The mask, the facade, that'll fall down the eyes. You'll know in the eyes, the eye will appear dead. Um, there, it'll be cold, there, it, there won't be any liveliness. Uh, and little by little, your twin will see it and the darkness will be revealed and what you'll even find is that in the physical level that person will change their hair change their hair color um, do things that seem out of character they'll seem to completely flip their personality why because that energy is is pushing them to mold themselves to be the twin look like the twin so it gets a little tricky and yet keep focusing on your beloved keep pulling them into your heart that's what you do that's what you do you can also call upon that person that you perceive is having an influence on your twin and we're not dealing any anymore over here at this level with a physical confrontation you're not going to that person and, and risking yourself risking your precious angelic body into something you do this at an energetic level where you call the higher self of that person and you say get off my union however you do it however nicely and kindly or firmly you want to do it get off my union you have a dark energetic on you go get that off of you get away from my union and get off of us get out get out of my union everything is concluded it's expired and, and that's it now, you and your twin are the only ones who have the keys to each other. You have the keys to each other. Not a soulmate. I don't care how lovely that soulmate feels. And um, a lot of us have had soulmates that feel great. Sometimes they have felt like the only thing that feels like anything. You know, you feel the love. They were there as a reminder. It's important to discern. Is this a loving soulmate relationship, a true friendship that was formed at the feet of God? Or is this a friend, because we're all friends back home, is this a friend who has become a blood enemy or is carrying a false twin energetic? Because this does exist. It sounds like a fiction story or a romance novel or a fantasy thing. Where did all that come from? It came from our stories. We have stories and stories and stories. Now, you know, this is the mirror. There's the mirror. And so what do you do? Your, your twin is there. And you have to reflect this to your twin. You have to say it to your twin. This is not our union. It is time to go. Your twin is within. You talk in your heart. And I'm going to tell you something. A lot of the people I speak to are females. The majority of uh, it seems to flop into two areas for masculine and feminine. And yet it's getting closer and closer together. I received this last week or last year, right around this time. The Great Restoration. And what it says on the back is, you're valuable, you're unique, 
you are worth restoring. And it says, why do people go through the trouble of restoring a classic car? Something of great value isn't thrown away. Don't throw away your twin. Don't let anyone talk you out of it. Don't you yourself talk yourself out of it and say, well, my biological clock is ticking. They are being restored. They are being restored and this is the last fell swoop for you to come together and do the merge. Do what you can at the other level and be ready in the physical. So I'm going to talk just a little bit more here about where we've been. This is just a little um, slight history lesson. Not everyone has been to these places. I have been, so it's my personal experience I'm speaking of. We've been to places like Andromeda Sirius. We've lived there. We've brought our flamey energy there. And we've been in the Pallades and uh, Jupiter, which the Pallades and Jupiter are predominantly matriarchal feminine energies, divine feminine. Andromeda and Sirius have gotten predominantly uh, patriarchal. We've brought these energetics here. We've um, been we've been in transit, planning to meet up here, and so we've met our counterparts here, and you have these dualistic experiences that were collapsing here. So this is Earth. This is our fourth dimensional twin flame meeting point ready to take it into 5D. So you are actually fifth dimensional entities of light and love with the brand new blueprint, the template of new relationship. You are 5D entities with 5D template, fifth dimensional, living at a fourth dimensional level. All of those old agreements are done. They're part of the old 3D We've left that space. The duality and dynamics that we have been in this incarnate life. This is your last incarnate life for many of you. You can choose to do another life. It's a choice. Why reincarnate? That's what I would say. Why? Why do you want to come back here for more of this stuff? Or do you want to move on? Think about it. No, don't think. Feel about it. Feel it. Okay. Duality and dynamics that we have been in this last incarnate life are a full circle of where we have done the most repeated soul damage. And with the created non-light energetics, um, loving our soulmates. So the special dispensation was actually to be with soulmates, love them, experience things, experience the depth. We love our soulmates. They're in our heart. It's time to get them out. It's time to for your full merged union to come to you. And yes, it's being brought to you. We're being brought together. It is to, why did we do this? Because we wanted a brand new template so that we could, we could be together and be safe. Okay? We wished it. We wished to have forms. So we created it and we went ahead and did it. We improved it. We transmuted any of this stuff. It's been transmuted. We're sending back the perfected stuff to these places. A lot of it has been perfected, and we're perfecting it even more here. This is where we are fully resurrecting ourselves all the way back to source. Our full light bodies. Not to fall again into the 3D pattern and damage, but to emerge out of it into the fullness of our being in full 5D union in our sacred union. That's the sacred divinity that we are. And thank you so much for uh, watching my videos and have a wonderful day. Keep pulling your twin in, pull them down from the head, up from the groin, into your heart, hold them in your heart, talk to them, hug them, hold them, tell them all about your wonderful things that you wish. Thank you. Thank you again. Bye now.